to order. First of all, I'd like to uh, welcome to the board Dr. Bo Hannaford. Welcome back, <laughs> sir. Thank you for your willingness to serve. Good to be back. Thank you. So, we'll go to the consent agenda. All the following items which concern reports and items of a routine nature normally approved at AHA meetings will be approved by one vote unless any trustee desires to have a separate vote on any or all these items. The consent agenda consists of the discussion, consideration, and action on the following items. Minutes of the <coughs> special trustee meeting on July 20, 2021. Uh, minutes of the regular finance meeting July 20, 2021. Minutes of the regular finance meeting August 17, 2021. Minutes of the regular finance meeting September 21st, 2021. And a check report July 9th, 2021 through September 8th, 2021. I move we approve the consent agenda items A through E. Second. I have a motion by Dr. Brown and a second by Jay Randles to approve the consent agenda as it was presented. Roll call vote, please. Gasper? Yes. Hannaford? Yes. Randles? Yes. Simon? Yes. Brown? Yes. Thurman? Yes. Next is the CEO's report and would like to recognize Candace for her completion of the National Rural Health Association CEO <laughs> certification. So congratulations.
two phones are busy, and of course they'll then roll over to the front if all of those three lines are busy. But hopefully that'll accommodate um, scheduling appointments um, easier, and it will allow our staff at the front desk and also at the two clinics to focus on the people in front of them instead of focusing on two things, the phone ringing. So hopefully that'll work. We're going to try it. Um, we've got the students, Northwestern students back, and you'll notice in Regina's report under nursing that we, we finally got in our two V60s, it's high flow um, BiPAP. We have had these ordered for months, and literally when this next round, when this last round of COVID hit, um, our hospital was full. We were out. We were out of equipment, and we. I remember we put a patient in a room, and all we had to help. We had a fan blowing on her to help her feel like she could get, you know, her breath. And it, I mean, it was just like disheartening. That's all we could do. We can't transfer them anywhere. You know the story. Same old thing. Anyway. Um, I had called Central Supply a few days before that and asked about these V60s. Where are they at? We, we need to know our status on them. Where are they at? And she replied with, they're on back order. They can't tell us when they'll be here. And lo and behold, that patient hadn't been here an hour, and those V60s showed up at our back door. Like, Regina and I cried. I am not even kidding you. How can you go from... They're on back order. We don't know where they're, when they will be shipped to they're at your back door. Here they are. So, the God thing is all I can say. So, there's Michelle's report um, regarding collections. Uh, still working on our True Bridge project. Um, they are supposed to be coming out. They've pushed it back to the end of October now. So, yeah, we won't even get into all that. It, it's been a struggle with Drew Bridge. Our, it, it's our team, so we ask for a brand new team. And entirely, they're entirely replacing the team that we have. So hopefully we'll see some improvements from that, but um, I'm not going to promise anything at this point because they've made me look bad. So. <laughs> anyway, um... Physician clinics with Scott and Christy on town. We did move Steve up here. Um, <coughs> so he's at, he'll be in the clinic with Brian. Today was Paige's last day. Had a going away um, dinner for her at noon today. And we're really going to miss Paige. She's going to do dermatology. So she'll be, over the next six months, she'll be in Stillwater um, learning the ropes of dermatology. And then she'll be back in Enid in her own practice there, so, which is much needed. Um, we always have patients that are looking for dermatology. Um, congratulations to Regina Wilson. Regina pulled a fast one on all of us. So the same day I finished up my class, she calls me, she says, I have to tell you something. I said, okay. She said, I've been studying for my emergency room certification and I passed. I just got the results. So that's like studying for your boards again. And she had been studying for six weeks. She didn't want to tell anybody because she was afraid she wouldn't pass. And she didn't want to be embarrassed if she didn't pass. So um, she, she got her certificate in the mail um, this week and we we all recognized her today for her successful completion of that. And we let the staff know that um, if any of them want to take that on, and if they pass, we will pay for the, for the cost of them taking that test. So um, that only helps us. She said it was a great experience for her to go back and uh, refresh on some of that stuff. She learned, you know, she, to dig in and, and learn some new stuff as well, um, and she's glad she did it. So, helps all of us. Um, just like everybody all over the country, everybody's worried, and I think 
St. Anthony, was it St. Anthony and OU? Was today or tomorrow the day that everybody has to be vaccinated? The 30th. The 30th. So um, we're all standing by to see if it becomes a mandate. Um, we're not going to mandate it unless we have to. We don't have enough people to replace. Um, on my call yesterday, um, one of the guys, the CEO from um, one of the New York hospitals, they're pretty big for critical access hospital. They had exactly half of their OB staff walk out, and they are going to have to quit delivering babies. So um, it's scary. I don't know what is going to happen if, if this goes through, and we're all faced with that. Kelly's faced with it as well. And We'll just have to sit back and watch. That's all I have for my report. Does anybody have any questions for me? <clears throat> there are no questions, Candace. Thank you for your report, and I would entertain a motion. I'd like a motion to approve the Sheriff Medical Center written report for September 2021. Second. I have a motion by Dr. Hannaford, a second by Dr. Simon. To accept the Sheriff Medical Center writ report for September 28, 2021. Roll call vote, please. Hannaford? Yes. Randalls? Yes. Simon? Yes. Brown? Yes. Bowman? Yes. Jasper? Yes. All right, next, Chris, CFO's report. Okay, so we have two months here, so um, if you look at August, you can kind of see what happened in July and August from there. Uh, you can see, you know, Pretty big uh, difference in the revenue. Obviously, you can see in July we had, uh, you know, we were fairly busy. Uh, then in August, like Tina said, we jumped up and we had $350,000 or so more revenue in August than we did in July. Uh, you know, a lot of that just had to do with patient days, you know, 140 patient days in August compared to 100 in July. Uh, those are the inpatient days. And in the clinic office visits, we had 2,348 in August and 1,500. Right. I saw that. I was like, oh my so gosh. Eight, so 800 a more, increase. Yeah, 800 more patients seen in the clinics in August and July. So that just kind of goes right with what Candace was saying, how everybody's swamped. I mean, you can't, you can't get in uh, anywhere. Uh, so it's been, it's been interesting to see. So everybody's been trying to kind of just hang in there and get through it. Uh, our AR took a big jump in August. Um, you know, if you look on one on page six, you can see we had 731,000 in July, and that jumped up to 1,103 in August. So it's about $372,000 difference in unbuilt. You know, a lot of that has to do with just the volume of patients seen. Uh, some of those are still in the hospital, so they're not discharged. And then that also falls back on uh, just charts being finished. Uh, everybody keeping up with uh, the pace and trying to keep up with getting charts done, getting everything done so we can get bills finalized and sent out. Uh, so that's kind of where the, the big jump is when you look at the AR uh, and what happened from July to August. Um, accounts payable is kind of hung around four hundred fifty to four hundred eighty thousand dollars. So nothing, nothing new there. Uh, like I said, the gross patient revenue one point eight, almost one point nine million. So three hundred forty six thousand dollar increase from in July. Um, I'll be interested to see what September looks like. I haven't kept up too much with how busy they've been upstairs this month. So I'll be interested to see what that looks like. Um, Operating expenses, you know, a little bit of an increase from July to August. Uh, I think just with everybody being so busy, obviously expenses are going to go up with go up along with that. Salaries as well. Uh, in September, we'll definitely see it in September with all the providers that we have for September. You know, you'll see a jump in salaries. Uh, that'll kind of back off a little bit now that Paige is leaving, and then the end of October when Dr. Galbraith leaves, that should come back to where uh, where we should see it for the rest of the year, uh, barring any other changes. Um, 
with the revenue being so high, then you know contractuals are going to obviously go up as well. Uh, some of these are a little bit higher than expected. Like our clinic contractual is pretty high. We're still kind of looking into what caused that. Um, but overall, the contractual is 47 percent. In talking to the auditors, especially for Medicare, we're hovering right around 49 percent. So that's just kind of right on par. Um, that 49 percent, a lot of that. You know, we'll see back when it comes to the cost report. So we'll uh, hopefully we'll be getting a decent amount chunk of that back whenever we get the cost report finished. Uh, 340B revenue. I want to talk about that for a minute. We, you know, we haven't really touched on this at all. You know, back in November, uh, we uh, got our RC certification. And with our 340B, that has to do with um, our prescriptions that the providers um, prescribe to their patients. Through this 340B plan, we get it through a discount rather than going uh, through all the major companies. In doing that, we work with holders, and so we get to see that um, uh, the, basically the discount comes back to us. We have not been able to do that since November because we were waiting for our RHC status. We were certified in November. CMS didn't get us our number until just this past, a few weeks ago, I think it was. So we've been shut off on our 340B revenue from November through September. So 10 months of revenue that we have not been able to capture. That Now that we have that um, certification, we're now going back to November and are trying to recapture everything that happened from November on, uh, which should be, you know, we typically average around 20000 to 30000 a month, so this should be, you know, $200,000 that, that should be coming back to the hospital. And then once uh, they get everything in place, it'll be more of a consistent every month. We should be getting some money coming back from that, that program. So excited to finally have that. I don't know. If, did you know that? So Friday, I get a phone call. They had a their surprise survey on Friday. I told her she came so, in. It was about nine o'clock. And they did fine. Yeah, they clinic did really well. Yeah, uh, they did really well in there. She said that she was very happy with how everything turned out. You know, our office manager. That was her day off, so she actually got. I think somebody drove to her house because they couldn't get a hold of her. Yeah. Drove to her house. She was, she out was outside and on the phone with her and then had to come in on day out. And then she sees five missed phone calls. Yeah. You know, she's like, you can't get a hold of anybody. <laughs> what's wrong? What's wrong? Yeah. But I think it went well. You know, they did the initial certification uh, and walkthrough, but it was all virtual. So they said they're trying to get caught up on, on all the virtual um, walkthroughs and now kind of show up in person. I gave her a hard time. I told her, I, you know, who comes on Friday and does something like that and expects that everybody's That's course. There, so. But, like you said, it went well. She had nothing but good things to say, so we'll get that report back and see how it goes. And that back it actually came back, back to people? Yeah, they said it could be something where, you know, it'll... Well, we also, when we first set up the program, it was just with holders. Uh, we've, also, we've now been set up with Walmart as well, so we'll be able to go back and capture Walmart, too. Uh, it'll take a little bit. We've told them to let us know what this will look like because I think it'll put a little bit of pressure on Forbes and Walmart. And obviously, we don't want to just they hammer. Actually benefit we from it as well they did, right? Yeah, the pharmacies benefit from this too, but we didn't want to hammer them and, and put ten months of backlog for prescription meds on on holders and kind of make them mad. So they said they can kind of go through it and, and space it out so it's not all at once. And, and if that's what holders wants to do, they'll talk to them, kind of get their their idea, their opinion on what they would like to do. So, how much vendor are you using? We, uh, ACI is the okay. company that we use to kind uh, consult and mm -hmm. run that for us. Outside of that, that's pretty much it for most of them. Anybody have any questions? Okay, put back to the nursing home. So if you look at the nursing homes, if you look at July, if you don't look at July, then you won't notice this big difference. But in July, you'll notice there's a large 
difference in the uh, oh, there we go. in their AR. Uh, we switched. I'm sure Kelly will probably touch on this. The nursing home switched um, their accounting software. They've been using point click care for their, the billing side. Um, in July, they started using point click care for not only the billing, but also the general ledger. We had used an accounting software at Phoenix in the past, and it, uh, it, it was not a very robust system. So we were kind of figuring up the accounts receivable that we thought it was. But then whenever point click care came in, now that the billing was tied to the general ledger, we could actually see where, where our AR was actually at. Turns out we were pretty far off. Um, so that's why you'll see the big jump from June to July uh, in accounts receivable, and that's just getting a more accurate number. Uh, we kind of both looked at that and couldn't believe that the, the number was such a big difference from what we had down in our books. But uh, there's been some growing pains with it, but it's, it's working out well. Uh, it's nice having all that billing information along in the general ledger. Uh, still working through some kinks, trying to figure out how we're running our statements at the end of the year, uh, but it's, we've worked with Kelly and, and Tanya and Rita, and we're kind of working through that, so it's been, it's getting a lot better. Uh, so that's where the increase in AR shows up. Uh, their AP, you know, 94,000, that's about where they've been for the last several months. Uh, their patient revenue, 235,000, which is right on par with the prior months as well, so not, not a whole lot changing over at the nursing home. Um, I know he's working on the salaries are a little bit up, and I know they're working on market adjustments for their employees over there, so that will probably stay up a little bit uh, once we get through all those um, adjustments. They still have some stimulus money over there. Uh, that, so they had some code expenses in July and August. Uh, that's what caused their kind of operating expenses in July uh, to be so much higher. They also had uh, the utilities. If you look on the utilities section of there, that's kind of up and down, just based off when we get the invoice and when it actually gets paid or put into the system. So that's why you can kind of see a. Uh, Three hundred dollars one month, thirteen thousand. So getting caught up in July from June, and then in August the same thing happened. Four nineteen. So in September you're going to have another big utility spike. Uh, that all just depends on when when they get the invoices actually logged into the system. So that's if anybody's wondering why in one month they're so much higher than the other month. Maybe I have any nursing home questions. Homestead and nursing home and homesteading. I'll let, let, I'll let Kelly talk about kind of census and how everything's looking, uh, what they expect for the year. I know nursing home they were talking about having some more uh, census going up, um, so I'll let him kind of touch more on that. So that'll kind of give us an idea of what to expect in future months for revenue for them as well as the homestead. Uh, because you know, say, along the same lines as the homestead, they're 53,000 this month, you know, there's 60,000 in July, 71,000 in June, so in the last couple years in June, they've always had a big uh, <coughs> jump. I'm not entirely sure why, but so it looks like it's coming down, but really it just, I think every year they, maybe everybody just gets caught up at the end of the year, so that's why, it's, why they get those big jumps. Um, utilities, kind of the same deal, they have, um, Tanya, the person that pays the Northwest, the nursing home bills also does homestead, so that's why in June you have $300, July is $10,000, August is $150. So kind of the same deal, you've seen another spike in September, but that's why those, um, why the, it's so up and down on the utilities line of the state. Uh, they're also doing some work over there on AC units, so that's, cause an increase in expenses as well. I know Brad and Ben have done quite a bit of work in trying to keep up with uh, the AC units. I think it's everything is getting better. They've got it all under control now, especially with things starting to cool off in the next week. I said that'll help too. But they've done a really good job trying to keep the costs as low as possible. Uh, Brad and his team are pretty knowledgeable on 
kind of keep it up with those units. So they do a lot of the work on their own, which, which helps out a lot. But outside of that, they've kind of just um, done a good job of keeping things running over there without any, any big issues. Anybody have any questions about Homestead? Okay. Do you want me to go do the approval or face and go let me do that? Yeah, I can do that. Okay. Any other questions about the financials? If not, Chris, thank you. Next item is to uh, authorize Kiki Bowden uh, to request wire transfers. So Kiki is uh, Kiki's here. She just going to that. Kiki, she's been here with you. Most well, yeah, right. she was taking. She was training for my position when they gave her the HR position. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> I got my position back. back. <laughs> what head back. So, um, but uh, Kiki is, is helping out with some of the HR duties and uh, will need uh, access to be able to do wire transfers. And so um, we need to, uh, I guess, approve or disapprove that. So I'd entertain a motion. I make a motion we approve <coughs> Kiki Bowden to request wire transfers. Second. We have a motion by Jay Randalls, a second by Dr. Hannaford, to authorize Kiki Bowden to request wire transfers. Roll call vote, please. Randalls? Yes. Simon? Yes. Brown? Yes. Bowman? Yes. Casper? Yes. Hannaford? Yes. Okay. All right, next will be the Medical Staff Executive Committee. Is there anything to report from their meeting? Not that I can remember, but let me get back to where that might be. Yeah, I think that was the Okay. So under the credentialing, there are numerous uh, uh, credentialing to be done. So we'll start. The first one is to appoint to courtesy staff Matthew Toms, PA. I move we appoint to courtesy staff Matthew Toms, PA. Second. We have a motion by Dr. Simon, a second by Jay Randalls to appoint to courtesy staff Matthew Toms, PA. Roll call vote, please. Simon? Yes. Brown? Yes. Bowman? Yes. Gasper? Yes. Hanniker? Yes. Randalls? Yes. Next, to appoint to courtesy staff John Gregg, MD. Make a motion we appoint uh, to approve uh, appointing John Gregg, MD, to courtesy staff. However, that's read. Second. <laughs> Who had the second? All I can hear was giggles. <laughs> Sweet Jay. We're calling you that from here on out. That's better than some things I've been called. We have a motion by Jay Randalls and a second by Dr. Hennifer to appoint to courtesy staff John Gregg, MD. Roll call vote, please. Brown? Yes. Bowman? Yes. Jasper? Yes. Hennifer? Yes. Randalls? Yes. Simon? Yes. Next, we have a uh, reappointment to courtesy staff. Donnie Wynn, MD. I move we reappoint the courtesy staff. Donnie Wynn, MD. Second. I have a motion by Dr. Brown, a second by Dr. Simon to reappoint the courtesy staff. Donnie Wynn, MD. Roll call vote, please. Bowman? Yes. Casper? Yes. Hanniford? Yes. Randalls? Yes. Simon? Yes. Brown? Yes. Now, I'm going to butcher this, and I'm sorry <laughs> to Jody Lynn. <laughs> Huh? All right, we'll skip that other part. <laughs> Next item is to reappoint to courtesy staff Jody Lynn Aquino, MD. Make a motion to reappoint to courtesy staff Jody Lynn Aquino, MD. Second. 
We have a motion by Dr. Hannaford, a second by Dr. Simon to reappoint the courtesy staff Jody Lana Aquino, MD. Roll call vote, please. Gasford? Yes. Hannaford? Yes. Randalls? Yes. Simon? Yes. Brown? Yes. Bowman? Yes. Next item is to reappoint the courtesy staff Shelby Hayes, MD. Move we appoint Shelby Hayes, MD, to courtesy staff. Second. I have a motion by Dr. Brown, a second by Dr. Simon to reappoint to courtesy staff Shelby Hayes, MD. Roll call vote, please. Hannaford? Yes. Randalls? Yes. Simon? Yes. Brown? Yes. Bowman? Yes. Casper? Yes. The next item is to reappoint to courtesy staff Trenton Mefford, DO. Make a motion to reappoint to courtesy staff Trenton Mefford, DO. Second. I have a motion by Jay Randalls, a second by Dr. <coughs> Hanford to reappoint to courtesy staff Trenton Mefford, DO. Roll call vote, please. Randalls? Yes. Simon? Yes. Brown? Yes. Bowman? Yes. Gasford? Yes. Hanford? Yes. Next is to reappoint to active staff Philip Self, MD. I move that we reappoint to active staff Philip Self, Philip Self MD. Second. We have a motion by Dr. Simon, a second by Jay Randalls to reappoint to active staff Philip Self, MD. Roll call vote, please. Simon? Yes. Brown? Yes. Bowman? Yes. <coughs> yes. Hanford? Yes. Randalls? Yes. Next, reappoint to courtesy staff Troy Smith, OD. Make a motion to reappoint to courtesy staff Troy Smith, OD. I have a motion by Dr. Hannaford, a second by Dr. <coughs> Simon, to reappoint to courtesy staff Troy Smith, OD. Roll call vote, please. Brown? Yes. Bowman? Yes. Casper? Yes. Hannaford? Yes. Randalls? Yes. Simon? Yes. <coughs> Next, to point to allied staff Justin Tate Endersby, CRNA. I move we appoint to allied staff Justin Tate Endersby, CRNA. Second. And a motion by Dr. Simon, a second by Dr. Hannaford to appoint to allied staff Justin Tate, Endersby, CRNA. Roll call vote, please. Bowman? Yes. Gasper? Yes. Hannaford? Yes. Randalls? Yes. Simon? Yes. Brown? Yes. Maybe on the next one, it says reappoint to courtesy staff. We think that's supposed to be allied staff. Because he's a CRNA. Wouldn't that be allied? I always have trouble keeping up with what's what. Because those two are the same. Al I think. I think that's right. I think it needs to be allied. Okay. Courtesy staff oh. is a doctor. Rick, can we make that change or we need to do that? We just interlineate on the. Interval. Agenda that, okay. that was allied. Okay. I had that in motion. I move that we reappoint to allied staff Brady Reed CRNA. Second. We have a motion by Dr. Simon, a second by Dr. Hannaford to reappoint to allied staff Brady Reed CRNA. Roll call vote, please. Gasford? Yes. Hannaford? Yes. Randalls? Yes. Simon? Yes. Brown? Yes. Bowman? Yes. Next item is appoint to active staff Scott Burke, MD. Make a motion we appoint to active staff Scott Burke, MD. Second. We have a motion by Jay Randalls, a second by Dr. Simon to appoint to active staff Scott Burke, MD. Roll call vote, please. Hanford? Yes. Randalls? Yes. Simon? Yes. Brown? Yes. Bowman? Yes. Casper? Yes. The last appointment is to active staff Chris Burke, MD. Make a motion to appoint to active staff Chris Burke, MD. Second. I have a motion by Dr. Hennifer, a second by Dr. Simon to appoint to active staff Chris Burke, MD. Roll call vote, please. Randalls? Yes. Simon? Yes. Brown? Yes. Bowman? Yes. Gasford? Yes. Hanford? Yes. Okay, the next item is discussion action to override the provisional status for Dr. Scott Burke and Dr. Chris Burke 
giving them voting rights and the ability to hold office immediately. Candace, do you want to add anything to that? Instead of waiting the provincial six months, is we were wanting to waive that um, one since they've been here two um, to be able to use Dr. Burke, Scott Burke, as the um, chief of medical staff and be able to vote on that next month. Is there any questions, concerns, thoughts, questions? Because after Dr. Galbraith leaves, that'll be a med staff appointment with Dr. Lawrence. Any negatives? To I can't think of what negative there would be or why that. In fact, Monday or Tuesday, we are going over new bylaws to to start implementing some updated ones. St. Anthony's has um, since the affiliates have went together and had a law firm um, draft new bylaws and we're going to look at those next week. So it's probably an outdated something that mm -hmm. is just from years past that is going to go away anyway. Being as we have a history with them, we know that I mean, where they've been here before, uh, there should not be any surprises about their character or anything of that nature. I'll make a motion to override the provisional status for Dr. Scott Burke and Dr. Chris Burke. Second. I have a motion by Dr. Hannaford, second by Craig Bowman. To override the provisional status for Dr. Scott Burke and Dr. Chris Burke, giving them voting rights and the ability to hold the office immediately. Roll call vote, please. Simon? Yes. Brown? Yes. Bowman? Yes. Gasford? Yes. Hannaford? Yes. Randalls? Yes. Okay. Anything from Quapping? Um, Elizabeth in radiology, she attended training recently uh, to do a more specialized uh, CT procedures for uh, some of the uh, cardiology patients that um, they're seeing. So Michael and her both have completed that training. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and um, Brittany and Coco are working together to get t-shirts for staff and some little um, swag bags for the women who come and get um, their mammograms. Did I read they sold over 200 or, uh -huh. two or 300 shirts? Something, something like, that. like that. Yeah, it was crazy. Um, we had several employees out with COVID over the last month or so.
But there, basically, from the review, there was nothing of concern, and there was nothing that. Yeah, so uh, the, there was one dated July the fourth, and then this one dated August the twenty eighth. Of the two that need approved, and then the hazard and vulnerability assessment. That's a hard one. This is the one day. That's the August one. What you have in your book is July. It's actually it's the other way around. You have June. This is the August one. Yeah, I was looking at mine. Actually, my book has June. What does yours have? On the revision? Well, that'd be right. June for July. Right. So we actually need July for August. We need July for August. I've got that one, but it's copy. Well, so well I have it. my first one says July, but the rest of it's June 30. That would be right. Oh, there's some pockets. I think that's right. There are several days we put the latest date on the Yeah, I think the June. June for July. There's the July 4th one right there. Yeah, it yeah. ran through July 4th. Okay. So you have two revision reports. One is this lengthy one, and one is the, sh the shorter one, which is the August one. On back. I make a motion that we approve the revision report for July 4th. I think we've talked about that before. I just want to make sure you understand what that is. So all of our policy procedures are now on SQSS. And any, any policy that you put onto SQSS or you revise, it comes out on the report. And those then are taken to med staff. And then after they go through med staff, they have to come through AHA to show that um, they have been, there's knowledge, it's been reviewed, any opportunity to ask questions about any policies or procedures that we have. So we had a motion by Dr. Brown and a second by Dr. Hannaford to approve the revisions report dated July 4th, 2021. Any other discussion? If not, roll call vote, please. Brown? Yes. Bowman? Yes. Casper? Yes. Hanford? Yes. Randalls? Yes. Simon? Yes. Okay, the next one is the revisions report dated August 28, 2021. That is the shorter of the two. We have a motion that we approve the revisions report dated August 28, 2021. Second. I have a motion by Dr. Brown, a second by Jay Randalls, to approve the revisions report dated August 28, 2021. Roll call vote, please. Bowman? Yes. Jasper? Yes. Hanford? Yes. Randalls? Yes. Simon? Yes. Brown? Yes. Okay, the next item is the Medical Center Hazard and Vulnerability, vulnerability Analysis. So we sit down each year to complete this assessment, um, and we, we go through a list of uh, potential events uh, that could occur, and we rate those to determine um, what risk we're at for that particular situation happening. For instance, a fire, uh, loss of electricity, loss of your health information system, those kind of things. And we rate those 
in um, determine you know what it would take to mitigate that that risk. So that's what you see there. Any questions about that? If not, I would entertain a motion. I'd make a motion to approve the medical center hazard and vulnerability analysis. Second. Move a motion by Jay Randall, second by Dr. Hannaford, to approve the medical center hazard and vulnerability analysis. Roll call vote, please. Hasford? Yes. Hannaford? Yes. Randall's? Yes. Simon? Yes. Brown? Yes. Bowman? Yes. Okay, next item is Chair Convalescent on board. Kelly? Uh, things have picked up quite a bit in September. We, uh, we see in the, my report that we had 37.5 for our average daily census in August. In September, so far this month, we're averaging 41.2. So about four more residents and, and uh, a majority of those being uh, skilled nursing. So um, it would be a higher reimbursement rate for those. Um, we have uh, really in the last couple months uh, come a long way with our uh, activities and restorative programs and my gosh there it seems like there's something going on in the lobby you know two or three times a day different groups of residents coming out and doing things um, and uh, we have been very fortunate uh, candace mentioned it from a hospital standpoint but as far as staffing goes we aren't in um, as bad a shape as a lot of places are. I mean, we, we still need to um, fill some positions, but uh, we're pretty well keeping things covered, and we're covering enough that we've got adequate staff for these other programs. So um, things are going great uh, as far as that's concerned. Um, we did um, recently, we're, we're working on converting our lobby more into a, a resident-friendly activities area and one of the things we did and it was very popular it's very popular on saturday afternoons is a 84 inch um, flat screen tv and so football games are becoming more and more popular in the nursing home and and, uh, and scared me to death the other day i walked in there and they were, they were doing uh, exercises with a video on the tv and, and it's like life size so uh, <laughs> But, but yeah, so um, that has been uh, a very popular purchase, so the residents are really excited about that. Um, we will be announcing next week our homecoming king and queen, and they will be riding in the parade for Northwestern's homecoming. Excited about that. Um, we have, I know, I know the winners, but oh. I'm keeping it under wraps. Um, but uh, we're excited to have uh, uh, that presence in the parade. It's been a long time since we did anything other than watch the parade, so um, that's going to be fun. Um, the uh, other thing as far as residents are concerned, um, resident services anyway, um, we are scheduled to get our vaccine boosters for COVID-19 come Wednesday the 6th. So. Um, that's uh, scheduled, and we're doing that with holders. Holders will come out and, and uh, do that for us. So, um, you can see our nurse call system report there. Uh, we stay pretty um, flat compared to the previous month as far as our uh, call times. Um, September, we've had some trouble with our pagers. Our pagers. Now, the system is still sending out messages, but the pagers. I don't know why all of a sudden in September, but we've got pager problems. So we're getting those addressed and we might see a change in those times um, when we do the September report. Um, I mentioned the lobby, some other things with the facility. Um, we're 99% complete with the plan for our HVAC pro project. Um, we've, we've done everything we can do on our end at this point and we're waiting on the uh, engineering firm to wrap that up. And once, uh, once they have that 100% plan, we'll go to the State Department of Health for their approval. And um, uh, hopefully soon after that, we'll, we'll uh, be seeking uh, bids and that sort of thing. So um, 
We also completed our lactation room and we have um, already put it to use. There was a water line break um, and it affected all of us out here, the hospital, the homestead, the nursing home. Um, we were without water for about seven and a half hours. Um, the, the line broke somewhere around two o'clock in the morning. Um, wasn't a, the city wasn't able to start work on it till about six in the morning uh, because of uh, line location issues with uh, uh, calling Oki before you dig and um, and so but this, the city you know got that a pretty big break got it repaired really quickly and um, uh, we were um, we maintained compliance with everything we needed to maintain compliance for as far as uh, reporting utility failures so um, that was um, could have been worse, could have been longer, could have been a lot of things, but everything went well. We, we've been through this before, so we kind of know what to do when we don't have water. So, um, the, With that, I've talked to the city business manager, and she is uh, working with the city's engineers to um, further... We're kind of, we kind of have our system isolated here at the hospital. If we brought water in and pumped it through the fire hydrant, we can um, have isolated water system for the hospital and nursing home. Um, but for um, short duration events, like what we had the other day, um, it's not practical to, to mobilize the National Guard and that sort of thing. So the engineers are working to further isolate our system to where as long as there's water coming in from the well field, um, we'll have our own loop out here to, to feed nursing home, hospital, homestead. Um, and uh, won't be affected by breaks further down the line. So um, I am anxious to, to hear what the engineers come up with it, on that, but they, they think it'll be a relatively um, simple solution. So you can see in the report our resident satisfaction survey scores. Again, um, most things are pretty well, uh, doing pretty well. Uh, if they're in bold, that means that um, for the company that we participate in our sur surveys with, we're exceeding their, their national benchmark for satisfaction. So for a resident satisfaction, um, we're, our staff are doing well, environmental services are doing well, um, transportation um, activities and overall satisfaction are good. We need to... Um, work on our dining services and and we have um, we've been working on this for a while our system is such that we have uh, uh, electric electric um, food carts that uh, plug in and essentially what's happening is the food as we're serving it um, continues to cook and um, so the quality is diminishing in that so we're um, having trouble getting our orders fulfilled, but we purchased a system like what the hospital has. It, it, it doesn't plug in, but it's highly insulated and maintains that food temperature without overcooking or, um, or having things cool off. So the uh, hospital has good reviews with their you know, food and it's all prepared in the same kitchen. So we, we just feel like once we get that entire system into place, our food scores will go back up. Um, We are um, also, uh, the hospital has been, you know, Candace mentioned SQSS, a nursing home um, is uh, reviewing an agreement uh, to also start using SQSS. Um, we uh, probably should be starting that here before, I think the, the date that they put on the agreement was to begin November 1st, so assuming everything goes fine with our review of the agreement, I imagine it is probably the exact same language as the hospitals, and if that's the case, which, uh, everything will be completed pretty quickly, and we'll start having that uh, program available for our quality initiatives at the nursing home. Um, the Tierna, uh, our DON, and I are really looking forward to having um, that tool to be able to use to, to help with accountability and, and you know, 
everything's so busy and changing all the time and it's hard to sometimes keep up with things unless you've got something like this to remind you so um, we're looking forward to that um, we are highly concerned um, about the vaccine mandate as, as Candace mentioned we did do a um, anonymous poll of our staff um, which um, with a 78 percent response rate and they're uh, potentially could be about 25% of our staff that, that refuse to be vaccinated and, and choose to work in another uh, line of work. And so that, that has us uh, pretty concerned. Um, it is primarily in our um, nurse aid, med aid um, department. And um, that's Basically, anybody over 30 or 40 is, is getting the vaccine, and it's our young people that are really hesitant. Um, I, like Candace said, we're not uh, going to move forward with a vaccine mandate unless we have to. And so um, we're anxiously waiting to see what comes out of Medicare as far as those rules are concerned. Um, because, yeah, we're either... We're either going to be out of compliance for not being vaccinated or out of compliance for not having enough staff. You know, pick your poison. And so I don't, I, we're anxiously awaiting to see what comes out of that. Um, we are, um, Medicaid has, going back to July, sometime in July, Medicaid increased their um, daily rate um, for uh, DHS uh, residents at the nursing home. So, um, that uh, combined with another anticipated rate increase for DHS coming in January, um, we'll be um, adjusting our rates for the nursing home so to make sure that we're uh, being reimbursed at the full rate. And that uh, is coming probably here pretty quick, and we'll tell you about it when we do. Um, and then Chris mentioned the uh, big jump in AR, and uh, what that really was is that the Phoenix system that we have had been using, um, we had written things off in Phoenix that didn't translate over into uh, point-click care, so there was a large uh, amount of AR that uh, was still carried over into point-click care because of that, and so we're getting that. Uh, we'll be getting that worked out, but uh, uh, we, we have spent some quality time together in the last couple of days um, working on um, cash reconciliation and that kind of thing. So, But I'm uh, overall pretty pleased with the, what we're going to be able to do with uh, point-click care and how it ties directly into our patient record for our um, books. So, any questions about the nursing home? Any questions for Kelly? If not, Kelly, how about Homestead? Homestead is um, had an average daily census of 33.7 in the month of August. Uh, they had um, one person move in in August, and I believe they've had two move in in September. Um, things are going pretty well over there. They they have. Uh, all their positions filled. Um, the uh, residents have, um, each year we, we get uh, tickets to the Northwestern uh, concert series. And so the first concert was what, a couple weeks ago. And uh, residents really enjoyed going to that. Um, they are uh, just continuing, you know, their other regular activities and, and such as well. And um, as far as the uh, air conditioners that Chris was talking about, um, the, uh, there have been a number that have both required maintenance as well as some that have required total replacement. When uh, the way our agreement is with the Alva Utility Authority, um, our staff uh, with the medical center are to maintain those pieces of equipment and you know, operating condition until there's a point where they can't be maintained anymore. And at that point, then the utility authority 
um, replaces the equipment. So there have been uh, two units replaced and um, at the time this report was written there were two more scheduled to be replaced. I'm not sure if that has been completed or not. Um, 70 barges or something or another sitting out in the, the bay waiting for unloading that I think is keeping us from having some of the things that we need. Um, I didn't mention it in the, uh, I meant to mention it in the nursing home report, talking about staffing. Um, we have been without a uh, state survey uh, since, well, two years now, since August of 2019. The State Department of Health is seeking to fill over 70 nursing positions at this time. And so they are nowhere near quickly, you know, completing their annual survey inspections for long-term care facilities. That's all I got. Any questions? Any other questions for Kelly? If not, Kelly, thank you. Anything to report from Foundation? No, sir. All right. Thank you, Kelly. Next, Bridget, St. Anthony's report. Well, um, we seem to be having a small break um, with our COVID um, patients. We've been averaging around 60 um, in our main campus. And um, in the last couple of days, we've been about 29. So um, hopefully it'll stay down a little bit. Unfortunately, um, we're still um, having a situation with beds, and it has to do with everything that y'all are talking about here, too, staffing. Um, we've, Candace mentioned earlier, um, we were one of the first institutions in Oklahoma City to mandate um, the vaccination. So a lot of people waited kind of up to the last minute to kind of make their final decisions on what they're going to do. I don't know what the numbers are, but I do know that we lost a few um, over that. Um, and we've had several um, that have left for travel nursing um, positions, which is pretty common. Um, throughout Oklahoma right now and the travel nurses in that market are getting in the 145 150 an hour range and so it's very difficult to get some of the younger ones that have really no ties just to stay there and work for their regular wages they're jumping off and doing travel engagements and they'll come back and we'll take them back too but it's um they're just I don't know they're tired and the first round uh, they they did contracts, kind of internal contracts, and a lot of our staff was willing to pick up those fourth and fifth shifts, but this go around, they're just not. And you can't blame them. They spend a lot of time away from their families already, and it's just hard to ask them to do some more. So we are definitely having some staffing challenges. So the last time I checked, like 20% of our beds were unstaffed, and, which is not what we want because um, we've struggled to help our affiliate partners when we don't have enough beds. So um, we still have 20 to 24 people stacked up in the emergency room um, in any given day. So it's, it feels like flu season like all year long <laughs> at our place. And so I know people are growing very, very um, across Oklahoma. So um, we're kind of hoping that, that we get a little bit of break in that area give us some more time to kind of get people situated. They started a campaign probably, probably about two months ago. Um, Y'all probably noticed that um, SSM doesn't spend an exuberant amount of money on um, billboards or commercials. Um, but we have, as of recent, really started a campaign to try to recruit people to our family as a family environment to try to get them to stay with us um, as we're trying to prepare to go into the future. Um, so they're working really hard at it because we know that we have a lot of obligations throughout the state that we need to fulfill. So um, other than that, like he just said, we continue to uh, work on a couple of our projects and hopefully we'll have a nice set of legal updated medical staff bylaws, rules and regs by the end of the year. Um, we'll be also be working on um, a compliance plan and a lot of the hospitals kind of have compliance plans that five years ago they kind of copied and they're both sent around to each other and they're very outdated. They're not very applicable. Um, so that was one of our other goals this year is to try to get kind of a, a scaled down version of a compliance plan that can that's actually workable kind of compliance plan. Um, so 
with all the craziness, we've continued to try to, to keep those goals and work through those things. Um, and we've also um, had some gracious donors um, throughout this COVID experience. And so we're trying to tap into some of those um, resources as well and to see if we can kind of filter them out into our affiliate network, um, such as some iPads that have some well-being programs that are on them. Um, so we're hoping maybe we can get a couple out to each of our affiliate hospitals. And um, we do what are called lavender carts, um, and we do that for employee appreciation. So sometimes it's just sporadic, or sometimes it's if you have an event that you want to respond to from administration. So um, we're putting some carts together and, and donating some funds to kind of get those started for the hospital. So you'll see those coming out in the next couple of weeks as well too. So we want you to participate because we, we know how hard it is and nobody has funds left over to do those types of things as much as we know they need to. So um, hopefully you'll see a couple of those things coming out in the next couple of weeks. So it's really beginning to been hard, but people, the public, is really tired of COVID and the rules and mm -hmm. everything that goes with it, and um, they're being really hard on staff. It's yeah. pushing staff to the brink of walking away because yeah. it, it's tough. Mm -hmm. That's what we see the struggle in each of the hospitals, and it's, you know, I've been going to a couple of the board meetings that have uh, had budget periods, and putting contract labor into their budgets. We've never done that before. But there's just not a lot of sense of being able to get that kind of reestablished um, in this next annual year just because of, um, of people that, you know, they can go home, they're going home. Yeah. And they just don't want to. It's too hard. So we're hoping to do just a few things here and there to try to keep at least mm -hmm. some of them kind of engaged as much as you possibly can. And welcome to any, you know, if anybody has any ideas of anything in particular that we can help with too, we're open to those ideas. That's all I have. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you for being here. Next, City Council report. Greg? Well, our City Council meeting actually was very routine. In fact, I heard it was maybe a record for getting done as yeah. quick as it did. Uh, we've got a million things I feel like going on, but nothing really to affect us right at the moment. Uh, we had the mural fest. Uh, of course, we're having the same troubles as everybody. People sick, trying to fill spots. Um, really, I can answer any questions if you have. I, it, it was very routine meeting. It was actually a surprise. So. Most importantly, you improved. We did improve Bo Hannaford too. Bo yeah. Hannaford. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Uh, there's no extra uh, report from me, nor was there any new business items at the end. So we are adjourned.